I wish there was something. I wish there was something on the screen that would say we're live. You're there alive is. now. I, I see it on the screen. It says we're live. We're webinar what's, is now what's being what's streamed it? live on Facebook. Oh really? It, oh. So I'm so I'm seeing here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm looking around, uh, but I'll take your word for it that we're live. Yep, we're Top live. Left corner. Top you got to have a good laugh. We were, just, we were just laughing uh, earlier before we went live about um, about funny stuff. And it's like, man, it, life gets this gets too serious. You know, you got to laugh. Yeah. Life. Well, you know, there is, there's no quicker way to suck all of the joy out of your life than to get involved in politics. Now, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not discouraging that not uh, anyone from getting involved in politics because government goes to those who show up. So if you show up, uh, then you'll have government by the tail, and government is a uh, is a fire that needs to be uh, put out. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean it'll su it'll suck the joy right out of your life. I mean I, I've I've said it before. Uh, you know, you get deeply involved in this stuff, and uh, it's just like wow, man. I need to go have some fun. <laughs> totally, it's hard. You gotta, you can't, take, you can't, you can't take life too seriously. But in this business, uh, it is so serious. Like our generations after us are involved, but it's okay to just have a little fun for a little while and just laugh at something funny. It's good. Well, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, as uh, Breitbart put it, uh, Andrew Breitbart. Uh, he said, you need to be a happy warrior. Mm. And, and he was a happy warrior. Um, I think, I think he had some secrets, you know, to staying happy. Uh, and, and I think, well, they're not filling in Oregon if you have a gram or less, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> Work for me so, for a while. <clears throat> so here we are talking about drugs. If you don't know who we are, uh, this is Ben Edel over here. I'm not sure if he's on my right or my left on your screen. That's Ben Edel, and I am not Ben Edel. That's I am David actually, Darnell. I'm David Darnell with Restore Oregon now, not Ben Edel with Free Oregon. Although, you know, people get us confused all the time. I mean, you can see the similarities. We're, like <clears throat> we're, both, we're both young and good looking. Uh, <laughs> We both have similar pasts. Uh, That's a both... fact. <laughs> yeah, we do, don't we? <laughs> That's a fact. So, uh, our you know, our governor here in the state of Oregon uh, just never fails to disappoint. Uh, and uh, we were talking uh, before the show about the, uh, the disaster that's going on in southern Oregon. I've got a home in southern Oregon. I also have a home in the Lamont Valley. And I spend time between the two, and uh, down here in Josephine and Jackson, uh, Jackson County in this, this year, 2021, uh, the cartel, drug cartels moved in like I have never seen them before. I've had a place down here for uh, about six years. And uh, <clears throat> they came in with a vengeance and built uh, these large illegal marijuana grows. Uh, everywhere, and, and when I'm saying large, I mean I mean huge, huge grows. I mean I am a legal grower of marijuana. That's what I do for a living, and I am uh, at, was at one time the largest. I don't know what the stats are because you know we go back and forth, but I'm considered a large grower. And one of these things absolutely dwarfs all of my operations combined. That's how big they were. <clears throat> and they're not or, uh, big. They are because some of them are still here uh, and they're not even hidden. They're just, I mean, there's, there was no, uh, no way to hide, no uh, effort to hide them, no effort to make them look like something other than what they were. And, uh, and it's just re it's just wreaked havoc uh, in the in the local communities down here. People are concerned about their water uh, because water's being not only being stolen for these uh, grow operations. Uh, by stolen, I mean it's being used without a water right. <clears throat> and uh, but not only that, uh, you know their pesticide usage usage and their uh, fertilizer usage is not well. They're all illegal grows. So they don't care, you know, they're, they're, they got no uh, regulations to follow. They got no regulations to follow because, uh, although the OLCC, as I understand it, uh, is supposed to regulate, uh, 
illegal grows, uh, then, you know, they don't have the resources. I mean, this is, these, there are hundreds of them, uh, if not thousands of them everywhere. Uh, I have one, the property in which I live on uh, is a rural forest property. And I have, uh, the first one that got busted uh, is to my uh, south. Uh, and then after that one got busted, they set up in the rear of the property. It's a hundred acre property. And then to my north, uh, both of these are separated by one neighbor. To my north is another one. Uh, and then across the street from me is another one. And that's just me. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, I've talked to the sheriff about it. We've had meetings about it. And he said, you know, we're just going to, we don't have the resources uh, because uh, these are cartel grows. Uh, they are, uh, you know, they're involved in human trafficking. Some of the people that, uh, a lot of the people that are manning these things, doing the labor, uh, are essentially slaves. Uh, and they're living in poor living conditions. Uh, and as you all know, drug cartels are known for, to be violent. And so the police uh, come in with overwhelming force. And, and they can't really do that many of them. You know what I mean? And they're huge. I mean, they take, some of them take two, three days to process. Uh, so they can't really do that many of them. And uh, it's just a, a total, uh, you know, just a total uh, cluster basically down here. And, uh, and it's not just Josephine County. I understand it's Jackson County as well. You know, you know a little bit about that one going on down there, don't you? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I, there was a story that recently broke where the cartels had someone they, they worked to death. Basically, they thought he was dead, uh, and they, or he, and, and, but he was alive, and they, they dumped his body off at a gas station or something or some you know, public place in Ashland, and it became this sort of local story that got quashed you know, by the rest of the state. Uh, because the guy was an illegal immigrant and uh, and he was working as a, he was human trafficked. I mean, these coyotes bring people in across Biden's open border uh, and, and they'll do anything to get get across. And when all you essentially got to do is just walk across. I don't know what the coyotes are for, but uh, apparently the coyotes get you into in the United States. They're all part of hell. Uh, and yeah, so I think the coyotes keep you from being killed on the other side so you can cross the river. No, it makes sense. Makes total sense. So they get you, so they get you across alive, and then if you don't have the you know thousand dollars, whatever it costs, then they make you work it off essentially until they're decided you paid your debt. And so if you die under the working conditions of uh, that the cartels are imposing on their slaves, uh, then they just drop you off somewhere in downtown Ashland um, or whatever, yeah. right in the woods. So that's what's <clears throat> happening in our state. But Kate Brown knows about this, right? Kate Brown knows because we have people on the inside at the OCC who are saying, look, the sheriffs of Jackson and Josephine County are involved. Um, they, they like, like you said, David, they don't know, uh, they don't have the resources to tackle this problem. They're, they're the cartel, so they probably are outgunned. Uh, and, and so they're, they got to go in, like you said, with overwhelming force. So they're sitting there watching it. But it's Kate Brown, the governor of Oregon, that is fully aware of this and, and, and she does nothing. So one the thing that really gets to me is, is all this talk about people of color and, you know, no, there's no such thing as an immigrant or an illegal a alien. Everybody, why do we have borders and all this stuff? But it's those kind of, it's that kind of thinking and those kind of policies that where she then has to turn her back on true crimes against people that are that are disgusting and sad and terrible. And if the borders were shut down and you had to come to this country legally, then the cartels couldn't be human. They wouldn't be able to traffic people in and force them to work as slaves in these illegal grow operations, cutting into my buddy's business over here and, and, and doing it completely illegally. Why would anybody in the state of Oregon grow uh, above board if, if the cartels from another country can come in and do it with free labor and not even have to be regulated and steal your water that obviously that that water theft is going to be absorbed the cost of that water is going to get absorbed by people that uh live in the community and have water bills i mean this is crazy how can how can kate brown allow this to take place in the state of oregon how could the media and i'll give some credit to some local media because i saw a story about this last week but not that much I mean, this is this should be a huge a huge story. What what what, Dave? Why is this just like completely being ignored? Well, I I think you may have uh, said it earlier. I think it has to something to do with the fact that these are illegal aliens. Uh, you know, I, I mean, Kate Brown seems to be 
more than willing to spend whatever resource necessary to make sure that uh, legal aliens or <laughs> legal citizens, legal aliens, anybody who's here legally uh, cannot work unless they've been vaccinated uh, or they can't uh, keep their store open unless everybody wears a mask, but uh, seems to turn a blind eye to these uh, people that are coming over the border illegally uh, and bringing slaves with them and growing pot here illegally as well. <clears throat> My guess is if you arrest them, uh, this is a sanctuary state, and that law reads that uh, no state resources will be expended uh, to enforce federal immigration laws. That's how that uh, law reads, roughly. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, if you have a state police go uh, arrest an illegal alien for doing this stuff, and there's a, you know, a federal detainer on them or a federal warrant on them, you know, for chopping somebody's heads, heads off, throwing them in a car and lighting the car on fire in the forest, uh, which has nearly happened down here. I mean, we're, we're seeing the kind of uh, cartel crime that we wouldn't normally see down here. We did see a couple people uh, who didn't have their heads cut off, but they were shot, uh, put in a car, left on fire. Uh, f three miles down the road from me, I was listening to the police scanner, and there was a guy who had been shot by his employer who did not speak English, and he was trying to get away from his employer uh, because he had in, he did, in fact, uh, suffer a gunshot wound. You know, so my guess is... They're illegal aliens, and so they're welcome here in Cape Brown's uh, Cape Brownistan. Yeah, it's crazy. They got. They. It, it seems to me, it's strange, <clears throat> David. You're regulated um, to the teeth. I mean, every time I give you oh. a shout, it's almost like, "Hey, what you doing, Dave?" Oh, filing papers with the state of Oregon. Yeah. And I mean, literally, how many times have you told have I called you randomly, and you? That's what you're doing. You're just buried in paperwork, being yeah. regulated to the to death, uh, and and then these cartels that are illegal, that aren't allowed to be in this country legally, are able to come into Oregon because we have we have these sanctuary laws that Oregon says, yeah, come on in and do whatever you want to, that don't have to be regulated. They can have slaves uh, and, and can murder their employees when they act up and and light them on fire and probably started forest fires. I'm almost imagining, I bet, I bet a bunch of forest fires were started by these guys. They light their fields up, they light cars on yeah. fire. This is what they're doing, right? They're stealing water, they get water for free. And then, like, it's crazy to me how well, I mean, essentially how, how well they're treated by, by the state of Oregon. <laughs> hey, come on in. If you're an Oregonian, you got to pay, you got to pay the taxes. You got to, you got to get, you got to, you got to suffer with the paperwork. You know, you got to pay your employees, you know, union wages. Uh, but if you're not an Oregonian, not even an American, you can come in <clears> and bring your slaves and bring your guns and shoot yep. your slaves. If they act up, like this is yeah. crazy, man. This is yeah. super insane. This is an upside down world. We're in an upside down state. It is absolutely mind blowing to me. It is. It is. And of course, cartels are, uh, you know, for the most part, well run businesses, save for the, yeah. you know, chopping, chopping off of the heads and all of that kind of stuff, which, I, you know, not really a really good business practice. Uh, although it's tempting sometimes. Uh, you know, I mean, they're what they're fairly well run businesses and uh, they come up here well funded, uh, uh, take a lot of the resource, not just water that they're uh, a lot of them are buying the water. Uh, some of them are just downright stealing it. But I mean, th there is actually a resource shortage uh, down here in the spring when everybody is buying supplies uh, to grow their stuff. Uh, soil was in such short supply. Uh, that one uh, one cartel guy told my asked my uh, my soil guy he said he said well you know how do you get more soil and my soil guy says well I've been thinking about you know mixing it myself uh, but it you know it takes a lot of investment you know to put that up and, and the cartel guy says well how much does it cost and he said it probably costs about two million dollars to get it gone and the cartel guy says I could have that to you tomorrow <laughs> yeah. and my soil guy goes, you know, uh, no, you know, I'm not getting into business with the cartel. But you know, that's the kind of uh, that's the kind of uh, uh, pressure that's been put on uh, down here. Not just you know the destructive parts, but you know, it's it's uh, pressure on uh, uh, pressure on legal businesses in the state of Oregon. And then you know, the other thing about it is, <clears throat> you know, I got COVID uh, somewhere around September 4th or 5th, I think somewhere around there. 
And uh, we tried to, we, you know, we live out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, we live in the forest, uh, very rural. Uh, I don't go a lot of places. I don't see a lot of people. So we tried to figure out how we got COVID. And this is how we got COVID. Uh, there were uh, these uh, 15 passenger vans full of uh, illegal immigrants. Uh, and uh, Hold on, 15? Yeah, the 15 passenger vans. Oh, and 15, if you've ever yeah. been around, if you've ever been in the Willamette Valley, you see them, you know, running everywhere. Uh, yeah. Sometimes they have, you know, the short buses. But anyway, there's these 15 passenger vans uh, filled with illegal immigrants, and they showed up at a uh, colleague's uh, place to do some. Uh, they uh, wanted to know if they wanted to do some trimming, and my colleague, actually kind of a neighbor too, uh, looked at him and said, "Hey, these people are sick." uh why don't you you know they were visibly sick to him you know uh he said they're not well you should probably you know leave leave my property i'm not going to hire you guys and so these people are running through the communities and the restaurants and the stores and all the stuff uh and you know we're pretty sure that's probably because we had a big outbreak down here big outbreak of covid it was a it was yeah. a big spike you know the oxygen guy said everybody in, in cave junctions got covid uh it's the weirdest thing you know yeah so. weird huh they come in through the border that's wide open thanks to the biden administration and they don't get yeah. they don't get their they don't have to have a covid shot they don't have to have uh test negative they don't have any of that stuff they just get shipped <laughs> in, bust in all across the country that's what they've been doing but Oregon yeah. is a great place to yeah, and, they, and they don't lose their job when they don't get vaccinated. You know, they still have their, you know, job doing whatever it is the hell they do, chopping people's heads off. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it's it's an upside-down world we live in. And, uh, of course, Free Oregon and Restore Oregon now, uh, you know, are on the front lines uh, trying to bring, uh, you know, we're hitting it from a few different ways. Uh, Restore Oregon now is uh, coming from the bottom up, cities, counties, uh, trying to uh, establish constitutional sanctuaries, if you will, uh, in, the, in our most localist of governments to put that pressure upwards. Uh, Free Oregon is uh, coming through the judicial system with lawsuits, uh, putting pressure on the state of Oregon as well and its failed leadership. And, uh, and everything that we do, uh, well... <laughs> How much does a lawsuit cost, uh, Ben? I guess what I was getting at is everything we do uh, costs, <laughs> it costs money. money. Well, look, yeah, it, look, yeah, yeah. And free Oregon, like we we we're doing lawsuits, but we're also participating in in civil disobedience. <laughs> we're helping organize yeah. um, events and rallies in Portland. We've got a big one coming up on uh, January seventeenth because it's going to be at the Waterfront Park. Uh, we've got a January sixth coming up at Salem um, to to demand. Um, to demand fair treatment and equal justice under the law to, to celebrate January 6th and, and, and demand that these people get released and treated fairly. Um, look, we're a civil rights group, okay? So, so we're looking out for the civil rights of every Oregonian. And one of the things that we're gonna begin doing because look, 20, it's, 20, it's gonna be 2022. We're 12 months away from the, probably the most important election in our state's history. Uh, it's an election that's gonna mean freedom or tyranny. And we have to have money for candidates all throughout small jurisdictions, whether it be cities, towns, counties, uh, they've got to win these elections. And I'll tell you right now, like Tigard, Oregon, for example, to be on, to win a city council seat, it's going to cost 25 grand. That's just what it's, that's what it cost last time. It's going to cost more this time. So yeah. we have to do this. And there's some new campaign finance mm -hmm. regulations that limit individual uh, campaign donations. And um, the thing with our C4 is you may not get a, um, a write-off for your donation, but if you wanna donate to our C4 at Free Oregon for as we distribute funds into uh, good candidates and put up our slate, and I know that you know Dave and I are gonna work together on uh, Restore Oregon Now if you're gonna work together on, on this slate because we gotta build a great slate of freedom fighters that need to be elected. And uh, they're gonna need some funding to win their elections and, and that's coming up, right? We're gonna be focused on that. And the other thing is, is I think the biggest thing <clears throat> Free Oregon can do between now and, and election day in, in November, 2022, is to wake up the public. People need to wake up. I, I can't tell you how many times I've had conversations with parents like, have you vaxxed your kids yet? And I'm like, hell no. And, and they go, what? <laughs> how, how would you not vax them? What are you, some kind of monster? And I'm like, listen, do you know that five kids have died in Oregon since the pandemic began? Five. And all five of them 
had comorbidities, which meant that they were going to die from something already. So as tragic as that is, it wasn't COVID that killed them. Five. Right. They go, That's not true. That's a lie. And I, I'll send them the link to, to the uh, OHA tableau and say, look for yourself. Run a query on people who deaths 18 years and younger. There's five the, the entire time. So people do not understand the risk versus reward. You know, Dr. Latulip told us the other day on Monday, yesterday, that 19,000 people have died from, from the vaccine, according to VAERS. And a great many kids are showing up at hospitals with these crazy heart conditions. And, yeah. and they're being told it's the salmonella and the onions. No, they got a vax three days ago. Listen, th this is all you, you have to understand that in nowhere in our in American history have we had this many injuries from a vaccine and it not been pulled. The last one that was pulled was the swine flu vaccine in like, what was it, the 80s or something? And 400 people died uh, within a few days of getting the, um, the vaccine and they pulled it off the market. Now it's 19,000 according to the federal government's tracking system. And I'll tell you this, only 31 states are reporting uh, vaccine reactions, 31 out of 50, uh, 51 technically, but 31 out of 50 states are reporting so there's there's 19 states if my math is correct that aren't even reporting so the number that uh, that 19,000 number is way higher but go show me an oregonian that knows that not very many so we need to put up yeah. billboards we need to put up advertising we need to get people to see the truth if we can inform the public that information that intelligence is the number one tool <clears> that to maintain their own freedom it is and it's one of the greatest uh uses that we can you know one of the greatest uses of your money uh, that we can that we can possibly do is uh, alerting people, educating people, uh, waking people up, if you will. <clears throat> I know that during both the 2019 and the 2020 recall, which uh, Restore Oregon now is responsible for, uh, and we nearly made it in. Uh, well, it was a, it was a Herculean effort both times. But here's what happened: by the time we got to the end of this thing and after it, uh, only a small fraction. And we had 2,000 people out there gathering. Uh, petitions, recall petition signatures. We had 2,000 people out there. We're, you know, as much on social media as we could be, but just a small fraction of Oregon's voters knew that there was even a recall. I mean, if we had had 10, 20, 30, 50, $100,000 to spend on advertising, uh, we would have easily sailed across the finish line and had you know, 350,000 signatures to turn in uh, when we needed 280,050. Uh, and, so, and so it's one of the, I mean, when you talk about politics, when you talk about political action, uh, you know, it does take some office supplies and some this, that, and the next things. But really, uh, you know, what it takes is uh, enough money to, to let people know, like you say, uh, Ben, if people know uh, who these candidates are, if people know <clears throat> what their school boards, their cities, and their counties are up to, yeah, election time. Uh, if they know all of this stuff, and the media won't tell them because they're complicit uh, in the left uh, left narrative. Uh, if they know, then they can make informed decisions, and it costs money. It costs money to get to people. I mean, it costs money to get to people on social media. I mean, you can't hardly do anything on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, any of the social media platforms without, uh, you know, spending money to really get your message out there. So that's one of the things that we, uh, you know, that we spend your money on. Uh, and then, of course, you know, you've raised a ton of money for lawsuits and those, you know, continue to suck up quite a bit, I would imagine. They do. And they're important. Because look, right now, lawsuits are winning across the country. We're getting they wins are. in federal court in Missouri, in Louisiana, um, uh, in, in um, Texas. Uh, there uh, Was it Missouri or was it uh, Michigan? I can't remember. There was an email I got from, um, from uh, uh, Stephen Jonkis today. Uh, it was it was it was incredible. Uh, and what we're doing is we're we're pulling some of these winning cases, win, win, winning arguments, and we're and we're adding them into our case as we move forward in the court system. Look, as the as the court system tries to slow us down, the state, sorry, the state tries to slow us down. Right now, we're battling the state of Oregon because we're trying to recuse the judge on one of our lawsuits in federal court because he's married to Suzanne Bonamici. And the guy has, don't enter my courtroom unless you're vaxxed, signs on his door. And we're like, this dude is, is totally biased, man. Like, right. definition, this guy's biased, right? 
And so normally when a judge is asked to recuse himself, they just recuse themselves. But this time, this judge, he decided he's going to fight it because he doesn't want to be recused because he wants he already knows what his answer is on our lawsuit. He wants to make right. he wants to legislate from the bench. So now right. he's fighting it. So next week, or I'm sorry, by the end of this week, we're going to find out uh, because we're getting the chief justice to hear our case. And we're going to find out if this scumbag communist judge can get recused from our case. So we can have a, 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 a you know, a nonpartisan judge. Uh, actually rule on the case and if the, and if they rule and we win then guess what the the mandates on nurses and all the firefighters and all that, it's going to be overturned that's it point blank it's done come back to Oregon get your job back so it, it's 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 crazy but these kind of maneuvers continue to rack up the bills we got to give the fuel to these attorneys the good yeah. attorneys, and get them <clears throat> because they're winning all across the country against the federal government on the same arguments that we're suing in federal court against the state. So look, they are they are they are in trouble right now. The state of Oregon knows it. They know that Free Oregon has been coming after them, that the people of Oregon have been financing Free Oregon to come after them, and they're trying to block everything they can. The state is using your tax dollars right now to make sure that this stupid judge gets to rule on our case because that's their last hope. So they're right. fighting back really, really hard. <clears throat> Right. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I, I guess the point I'm getting at, and I think Ben is getting at as well, is uh, uh, we need to put money in the fight. You know, we need to put our time into the fight. We need to put our talent into the fight, but we also need to put our treasure into the fight. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a, the, the good news is this. There's, there, are, there are more of us than there are of them. There are. Uh, there are. They get, the left gets their funding from a relatively small pool. But it's a huge amount of money. We, we on the right or the conservative side or the common sense side, whatever you want to call us in the state of Oregon, are usually outspent two or three to one when it comes to almost any, uh, whether it be uh, an initiative petition, uh, almost any campaign. Uh, we, we get outspent because they don't want to lose and they know that money makes that possible. And so I guess what I guess I guess I'm begging for money here. Yeah, totally begging for it. You, you, you know, <laughs> I ain't too proud to beg. Look, they're, yeah, they're, they're, where's my cardboard? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got you got school districts in new like the Newburgh <clears throat> school district. Like, think about how small that is. There's a few yeah. handfuls. Of, you got actors and actresses from Hollywood, California, putting big dollars into these recall campaigns so that they can squash freedom in Newburgh. Like, this is crazy. And, and the reason they have to, they have, like you said, David, they got, they got these, these small amounts of people with this huge amount of money. Do you know why? Because they're elitist. And that's how you know when someone's an elitist. They're an elitist. They have no idea what it's like to be on the ground. They have no idea what it's yeah. like to be a nurse. They have no idea what it's like to work, you know, their asses off all, all day long, all through the pandemic, every single day, and put themselves and their family at risk every single day just to get fired because they won't get the vaccination, even though they've already had COVID. I mean, it's crazy. So these people in Hollywood and the people that finance these far left radicals are people that have never lived a day of real life in their life. And they just are right. so out of touch. They have no idea. They think, well, yeah, of course uh, there should be advantages given to certain people because of the color of their skin and advantages taken away from certain people from the color of their skin because that only makes sense, right? Because <laughs> in Hollywood people, they're, they're, they're out, out to lunch. They're out of touch. And, and yeah, they are. And they got all the money because they because they do and 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 but we have more money than they do like if we all put in a hundred bucks or 50 bucks like exactly it's them three to one think think about exactly. that exactly it's true and exactly that's how you fight these fights it's how you win exactly well here this is something i used to pitch a long time ago and i'm going to make two points here um the thing i used to pitch a long time ago is if if you have a tax burden in the state of oregon you know, if you pay taxes state income taxes the state of oregon <clears throat> you can donate fifty dollars a year as a single person a hundred dollars a year uh as a as a married filing jointly and it doesn't cost you a dime it is a credit directly off of your tax bill it is free money. If you don't give it to me, if you don't give it to Ben, you'll give it to Kate Brown and she'll blow it. <clears throat> so you can check that off uh, when you do your taxes. Uh, well, what you do is you, you make the donation before the end of the year. And then when you do your taxes next year, you can check off that $50 or that $100 to uh, Free Oregon or Restore Oregon. Now, 
Uh, now, here's the other point I want to make. So <clears throat> I'll ask you this, Ben. Uh, this is pretty uh, trivial minutia here. Not a lot of people would know this. What is the percentage of people uh, in the state of Oregon that uh, make political contributions? I have no clue. <laughs> I have no idea. Probably take a, take, take a stab. I'm going to say 2%. Two, two okay. The number uh, is 0 0.007. Seven one hundredths of a percent of the population of the state of Oregon has made uh, a political contribution. Now, some of that <clears throat> is a little skewed because we have organizations that have members uh, and they contribute to the organization. The organization has, uh, ha funds a PAC and the PAC money comes in here. But let's just say uh, that it is far, that at the most, it is one tenth of 1% of the people in the state of Oregon have their own skin in the political game. You know what? George Soros has more skin in the game in Oregon than, than Oregonians do based on that number. No wonder people yeah, from New like, York run our state. I mean, yeah, like a factor of a factor of a thousand you know, by a factor of a thousand or a factor of 10,000. So what I've always pitched is if, if, you know, if 20 or 30, 40, 150, 500, 750, let's say 800,000 people in the state of Oregon clicked off that $50 thing. Uh, we, and if it was split evenly between you, between free Oregon and restore Oregon now, we would be the two largest, most uh, well-funded PACs in the state of Oregon by a factor of probably three to four. Yeah, and we'd have a Republican governor uh, in 12 months. I mean, guaranteed. Yeah, 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 and that's the other thing. I mean, I that's, the, say, but that's, well, the, that's the other thing, that's the other thing, you know, that people don't understand is, is campaigns cost money. I mean, you can spend $25,000 easy uh, trying to get a city council seat in the city of or uh, a city of Tiger, and I'm sure it could cost upwards of seventy. Uh, I know in Josephine County, it costs around forty thousand dollars to run a campaign for county commissioner. Uh, I know that you could easily spend two or three thousand dollars if you really want to be effective running for a uh, school district seat. If you're running in a contested, and most of them are becoming contested by the far, 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 far left. Yep. Uh, you can spend thousands and thousands uh, trying to get elected uh, and still have to hire private security to keep the thugs off your front door. Uh, but the, the, and the and it just goes up from there. You know, a house district can cost anywhere from, uh, I mean, there's some house districts where people are safe. Uh, they don't have to spend a lot of money. They might spend thirty dollars or $40,000, you know, to get their name out there. They might raise one hundred dollars or $200,000. Uh, from their donors and their PACs, and they might share that with other candidates. But other House districts, Senate districts, are 500000 to $1 million or more, uh, you know, to run a campaign. Uh, and so, I mean, there is a tremendous amount of money needed in the state of Oregon to turn this state around. If we want to restore the balance in Salem, it's going to cost some money. It's going to cost about seven to ten million dollars. But here's the good news: if we all kick in a little bit, uh, you know, I know there's five hundred thousand of us. There is. I know there is. Th Fifty bucks each. There is. It's, it's, yeah. it's done. Yeah. Yeah, and so, you know, the good news is, is we can raise that money, but we have to be aware of the fact that just small amounts of money from a large uh, number of people can change everything, and I mean everything. It will change everything in the state of Oregon. It can. It can, and, you know, I've heard, you know, I, I'm new, right? Everybody knows I'm new to the scene. I mean, we, we got, you know, crushed in Portland, uh last year and we got into politics right because our line was crossed so i got into politics <clears> and, and uh i'm new to it but i i've heard stories you know there's there's been some things where um you know money was provided to different groups that no longer exist that have left the state people are long gone at this point as far as i know but they blew that money and didn't use it for what it was supposed to be used so people are a little bit hurt but look it's like if you if you if you you know, we got to realize that, like, you get your heart broken, you know, one day by a girl or a guy that you really liked that didn't, didn't, didn't feel the same about you or you split up and something just painful occurred. You know, you don't just say, I'm never going to do that again. I'm never going to fight again. I'm never going to donate to a cause again. 
you know, you got to go back because otherwise you'd never find that love of your life. Right. So what I'm trying to tell you is <laughs> in this really kind of sick and twisted way is that is that you're looking at a couple of big time fighters right now. We are fighters. We are fighting. We're fighting for ourselves. We're fighting for our kids. We're fighting for you and your kids. <clears throat> we want you to join us as well. Just the same. Um, there's nothing that we're like, give it to us and then we'll let you know how it goes. Like both Restore Oregon now and Free Oregon, we have open arms to anybody. And in Free Oregon, we have open arms to Democrats and, and liberals and, and anybody else because Oregon now what too. we care about is our civil liberties that are given to us by God or the greater power of the universe, whatever you want to call something above government and that the United States Constitution defends and protects and recognizes. That's all That's right. all we are. If you, if you believe in the first, second, third, and first 10 amendments, the, the Bill of Rights, and you want to maintain that as, a, as, a, as your American values, then you can join us and, and we'll find work for you. We'll, sometimes we'll go, hey, go with Restore Again Now and, and do a recall over here or come over here with us and, and, and come to an event or whatever it might be, right? But, but we're all in this together and, and, and we, got, we got a great group of unified mm -hmm freedom fighting organizations in the state that we're all connected to that we all work for like people's rights and um, Oregon medical freedom children's health defense there's some great groups and 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 we all work together and share resources to win and that's what we're trying to do is win we got to win it's time for it's time for Oregon Oregonians to have a win well it is it's time for the people of Oregon to have a win because uh you know like I said earlier 0.007% not very many people are involved in the political process and I'm just going to come right out and say it if you're not donating some money you're not involved in the political process that's right you, know, you, you have to have some money in the game I don't care if it's 20 bucks a year or 20 bucks a month or 20 bucks a day uh, and, uh, and, and I do it. I mean, you can, you know, you can, uh, I'm not a huge donor, but you can search my name, Darnell and or star. You can see that I've walked the walk and I'm just talk the talk. Uh, and I learned that a long time ago. I, you know, when I was, uh, an activist in the Republican party, I go, you know, the problem here is, uh, we got all these, you know, the unions, the Democrats are all, you know, funneling all this money into these uh, candidates and these causes. And we're not. You know, I mean, we don't have a conservative union. We don't have a common sense. No uh, we, we, the people union, you know, that can write uh, 25000 or $250,000 candidate uh, checks to the right candidates or to the right uh, measures or the right causes. But, you know, I'm here to say that if enough of us, you know, check off that uh, political tax credit, make a $50 donation if you're single, a uh, hundred dollar donation if you're married filing jointly that money really really adds up and if you're you know if you've never done it before uh i'll tell you what happens once you put money like in a uh, let's say you put let's say you're a republican i'm a republican you're a republican uh we're nonpartisan. we have democrats we have uh, independents we have lots of non-affiliateds i mean we're all working towards the same thing but if you put like money in, uh, you know, let's say you put money in your local county uh, party, which I have done, now you're invested. Let's say you put money in Restore Oregon now. I don't care if it's just 25 bucks for the whole year. Uh, you, now you're invested in Restore Oregon. If you put 25 bucks into Free Oregon, now you're invested in Free Oregon. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, it changes the way you look at everything. Uh, when you invest $100 in a candidate, a good candidate, a candidate you believe in, uh, when you invest 100 bucks in them, you're invested into, into the campaign. Um, you know, you're going to look at the campaign. You're going to uh, you're going to see what's going on with the campaign. You're going to defend the campaign. You're going to advocate for the campaign. Uh, and you'll do the same if you, you know, if you donate $100 to either one of our organizations, you're going to advocate for us because we're advocating for you. And so, you know, if you've never done it before, make 2021 uh, this next month, December starts tomorrow, uh, you know, before the end of the year, make, you know, make a donation to either or both uh, of our organizations uh, and see how it changes because uh, it will change things. It, it does. And you know, I got to tell you, you know, um, I get I get uh, I personally with Free Oregon, I check our P.O. box and I'm the only one with the key and I see the checks when they come in. And I and I and I see every every donation that's made to our website, and I see every single one of you. And I and 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 you know, doing that adds you to our communications list. And so when you do that, 
you're going to immediately get a communication the following week because every Monday I send out one email about the town hall. And then Angela sends one out on Friday. And from time to time, Sonia might send one out about an event or upcoming event. So we don't blow you up. But once you make that donation, you're also added into our communication family where we are working for you. Like you, you, you're our stakeholders. And that's the thing is like, that's, that's what I was trying to describe earlier is that once you make an investment in either one of our groups, you become one of our stakeholders. And, um, and, and we have uh, uh, a gratitude um a gratitude to you and also a responsibility to you to see through to do what we say we're going to do and, and and be victorious you know i you know to these days look i got little kids that play sports in schools and all this stuff right and 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 like they don't teach the kids these days that it's about winning and losing <laughs> i grew up it was like i want to win and if i lose it's going to suck yeah. but i'm going to learn and i'm going to be a better winner because i'm going to learn from my losses and i'm going to work harder or do something different or whatever but it, i play to win i i play to win and if and if we come up with a loss or we come up with a, a challenge that we we do something different quickly even if it's not the right thing it's going to be different because we're not going to do the same thing over and over again if it isn't working that's not the way free organ right. works. That's not the way Restore Organ now works. What we do is we do something different and we keep on fighting, we keep on hustling. And, and you know, people like like me and, and David, uh, you know, probably were saying, and Angela, you know, we're working full time uh, advocating in, uh, for uh, lip, civil liberty in the state of Oregon. And that's what we need. And the left has all of that because they got big government. They got the unions. Big government is the problem. When, when, when the government turns around and hires new people, then that's new union dues that go back into the people running for government, running for government to go yeah. create jobs in government to create more union dues. It's a vicious circle of money. It is. It's, kind of like, it's kind of like booster shots, you know? Oh, it's one, very definition of corruption. Let's get another one. <laughs> yeah. Let's get another booster shot, you know? It's the very definition of corruption. You're right. It's the very definition. It's corruption. And we don't have that because we're not corrupt. What we have is we have individuals, we have people, but we have more power. We have more resources considering all that, but we got to all play together. We all got to work together. Yeah, we do. We all need to put skin in the game and, uh, and, uh, and be victorious. I mean, I, you know, like you, I play to win, you know, politics is a blood sport. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not opposed to getting bloody if I have to, uh, and I have, <laughs> and I have politically and so have you. Uh, and, there, and there's still people out there trying to ex, uh, extract blood from me for, you know, whatever reason. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I play, I play hard and I play to win. And, uh, and, I'm, and I'm tenacious. Those that know me know that I'm uh, patient enough to wait years if that's what it takes. I've been at this for 12 years. Uh, and people say, why do you keep, you know, Oregon's a lost cause. Why do you keep at it? Well, my answer is simple. How, how can you not? How can you not do something? How can you just say, screw it and uh, go sit in the chair and, and watch TV? I mean, how, how can you do that? How can you leave that uh, for your children? How can you leave that for other people's children? I mean, you know, you, you can't do that. Once you know, you know. You can't unknow what you now know. You can't unsee what you've already, what you've now seen. Uh, and, and I think that's, you know, for most people that get involved in politics, that becomes, uh, for people who are, you know, as tenacious like you and I, you and I are, uh, there's no quitting uh, until you win. That's how you lose. You yeah. quit. <laughs> yeah. When I win, when, it, when, I, when we have won, okay, I'll walk away and let somebody else do it, but I'm not going to walk away until that happens. So, so. I hear that. <clears throat> I'd like, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Um, you can find Free Oregon at freeoregon.us, freeoregon.us on the web. Uh, you can also find them on the social media channels. You know what they are. You can find us at restoreoregon.org, restoreoregonnow.org, excuse me, uh, restoreoregonnow.org. You can also find us uh, on all the social media stuff as well. So uh, I, I guess my last word, Ben, and I'll give you the last, last word, but my last word again is, uh, you know, if you haven't invested money in political action, if you haven't invested money in those principles and those values uh, that you're willing to fight for uh, and that those like us and the people in our organization, which represent thousands of people now, uh, are willing to fight for, uh, if you haven't done that, uh, let's do it this year uh, and let's do it next year. And let's keep doing it. Ben, last word. 
Yeah, get involved. You know, Kate Brown's not just going to waste your money. She's going to use that money against you. And that's what that's what she's going to do. That's what the state of Oregon does. They take your money and they use it against you. They take away your liberty. They take away your opportunity and they force you into uh, into medical procedures and experiments and all kinds of crazy things. They're going to use that money against you. So give it to one of us. And um, it doesn't it doesn't take much. Write a check and you're in the game. Then you can go sit on your chair. <laughs> so what do you what do you do with that check, Ben? Well, you can send it to Free Oregon, and you can go to FreeOregon.us and get our address. And you can or you can send it to Restore Oregon Now, and you can go to RestoreOregonNow.org to get their address. Or you can just go to FreeOregon.us/donate and press the button, and you can probably do something even easier over there at uh, Restore Oregon Now. I think there's a simpler. But yeah, well, it is. You can donate faster. So donate faster at Restore Oregon now. <laughs> but whatever you do, whatever you do with that check, I'm going to I'm going to fill in for Ben on this one. Whatever you do with that check, make sure you sign it and send it. Sign it and send it. <laughs> I love that. You Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Always a pleasure.